Okay, let's take a look at this problem in our UT Quest linear momentum problem set. Uh, this is probably one of the most challenging problems you'll run across. Uh, what we have here is we have a rocket, and I'm just showing its initial direction straight up the page, and it needs a course correction. So it makes a rocket blast to the side to change the direction or change the course of the rocket. Ultimately speaking, what we're trying to do is we need to find out how much mass we need to expel horizontally to change the uh, course of the rocket. All right, well, this is going to be a conservational momentum problem. All right, initially, I have the rocket and the fuel traveling together in one direction. Then after I fire the fuel horizontally, then I've got the mass of the fuel, the velocity of the fuel, and then I have the rocket, its mass, and its velocity on a different course. All right, the easy part of this problem is our initial momentum. All right, the problem gives us the total mass and the initial velocity going in one direction. So we've got the initial momentum hammered out. All right, and we know that initial momentum has to be equal to final momentum. So we have the rocket and a certain portion of the fuel that are separated. But we know if we add their momentums together, we need to get the initial momentum vector. All right. Well, let's look at the uh, rocket momentum vector. It's V final. It's lost some mass. And so it's going to go off at an angle. So we really don't know a whole lot about this except for this angle. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this vector and I'm going to break it into components because I need to add it to the momentum vector of the fuel. Alright, now let's take a look at the momentum vector of the fuel. First of all, uh, we know that momentum is mass times velocity. So let's take a look at the velocity of the fuel first. Well, initially it was going the same direction as a rocket. Now imagine if you're well, you're going down the highway and you throw something out the window. All right, well, where's the velocity? Well, you, you think the velocity is straight ahead, but that's not correct. Not only do you have your velocity of going straight ahead, you also have that sideways velocity. So if you're looking at this as a sum of the velocities, I got my forward velocity, plus this velocity off to the side, so my resultant velocity is off at some angle. And this is usually the first tripping point of the problem. We make the assumption, or most people make the assumption, that that velocity is purely horizontal, but it's not. Remember the fuel had some initial velocity going in one direction, and then we add to that a velocity going off to the side. Like I said, very similar to throwing something horizontally very hard at the window of your car. All right, it's actually going to be going off at an angle. All right, so the initial velocity of the fuel, we know that. We know the um, velocity, the horizontal velocity that it was expelled at. So if we wanted to, we could do a vector addition problem here and we could find the final velocity of the fuel which doesn't really help us much because we need to add momentums, not velocities. So if I knew the mass of the fuel, then I could find the final momentum of the fuel. And likewise, if I knew the mass of the fuel, then I could identify each one of these components. Okay, so the final momentum of the rocket plus the final momentum of the fuel, both two-dimensional vectors, if I add them together, they need to equal the initial momentum stated in the problem. All right, now here is the key to solving this problem. Let's note that initially speaking, I had no momentum to the left or to the right. So my final momentum, I can have no momentum to the left or the right. In order for that to happen, these two vectors have to cancel each other out. I have to have zero momentum to the left and to the right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a vector substitution. 
I'm going to take this momentum vector of the fuel, this V final of the fuel, mass of the fuel, and I'm going to make it a uh, substitution here for the side opposite of the vector triangle for the rocket. All right, let's go to the next slide and see what that little vector diagram is going to look like. Okay, so this is a vector diagram of the rocket after the fuel has been expelled off to the side. All right, so here's the velocity of the rocket times the mass of the rocket. The mass of the rocket is now the total mass of the rocket minus the fuel. I have plus there. Not a good thing. Let's fix that. There we go. Okay, now why am I using V initial of the rocket instead of V final? Because the velocity in this upward direction does not change. Any velocities that have changed have been to the left or to the right. So the velocity in this forward direction has had no impulse from the fuel. So it hasn't changed. Unfortunately, I still don't know the mass of the fuel. So I really cannot hammer down the magnitude of this vector. But I do know the velocity. And then we've had this vector, which is going to be the hypotenuse of the triangle. And I don't really know a whole lot about it either, except its angle. Now here's the secret. This thing right here, the side opposite of this triangle, remember we said that the, that vector was the same magnitude of the final momentum of the fuel. Mass of the fuel times the velocity of the fuel. Velocity of the fuel we know. All right, so what I can use here is I'm just solving a right triangle. I'm going to use the tan function. And if I use the tan function, tangent of the angle, which is given, is the side opposite over the side adjacent. When I do that, my only unknown in this algebraic equation is the mass of the fuel. The algebra is a little bit nasty, but doable. And we can solve for the mass of the fuel. All right, kind of a tedious problem. Good luck with this.